A single person is always easier to keep under control and put under pressure than a motley crew of bums that can put their heads together and get crazy ideas. That's why I'd rather have done without the teams altogether. But on the other hand, it was the team races that tripled our turnover. A lot of the fans began to identify with a particular team and cheered for them at every meeting. Should I not have taken advantage of that? You be the judge. The Hawks, for example, were a very popular stunt team. Like a speedboat, she wants to cut it somewhere off, but she didn't care. Was living next to her, but never.
They couldn't wait to throw their hard-earned money at us. Crash Day became the highlight of the week in these guys' humdrum everyday life. But when we introduced the Team Wrecking event, everyone totally flipped out. In Team Wrecking, there was nothing but nothing that couldn't be turned into cash. Fan articles, videos, remote control fire spitters for the kids, even a dented fender could be sold for a couple of grand. It was unbelievable.
The enthusiasm of the people knew no bounds. <laughs> you remember the tunnel races? Barely room to maneuver and five or six vehicles simultaneously on a bomb run. Sheer suicide, if you ask me. In any case, for every smashed tile in the tunnel walls, there was a story circulating on the internet. After a while, I used to drive down there myself for the hell of it and smash a couple of tiles just to add a little grist to the rumor mill. The favorite event for a lot of the drivers was off-road madness, a stunt show in which the drivers could give everything and have a load of fun. Yeah, true, wrecking matches were more lucrative, but we had to keep our boys happy. Who wants to sit in a car the whole time that's being shot to pieces from all sides? I mean, let's face it, only someone who has fun and enjoys his job delivers top performance. And I believe if our drivers didn't have any fun in the thing, we'd never have been able to make the Crash Day League as big as it got.
We even had street races where drivers could use weapons. However, a kind of code of honor had spread in the driver's camp that prohibited the use of weaponry in a race. But of course, there was always someone who had nothing against firing a missile up the exhaust pipe of the driver in front of him. That held a certain appeal to me personally too, because races like that sold better.
started with a fight over a woman, and the bosses are allergic to that kind of thing. They just did not like women getting between the drivers. It was bad for business, period. I collared the two hotheads and told them to settle the matter between themselves over at the old press shop. Up until that point, it was just a typical driver's camp brawl, but then out of the blue, the cops turned up. It was clear to me straight away that we were heading for a heap of trouble if the bosses ever found out about it.
Every now and then, we do small favors for certain people. Nothing too fancy, a couple of parties, women, little things, just to make sure they owed you one. It was this one guy, big shot from the weapons lobby, who desperately wanted to do a couple of laps in an incubator. The deal with him was extremely important for us. We had no more explosives for bomb construction and we needed supplies urgently for the opening of a new arena. And what does this idiot do? Crashes in the first curve because he couldn't handle the car. I thought, hell, what now? But the guy climbed out of the car wreck grinning from ear to ear and signed the contract. He had the time of his life. Now with that, nothing more stood in the way of the pass the bomb event.
had a real challenge on our hands to offer something special for the qualification of the finals, and I was determined to get the disused container lot for it. I'd had an eye on the place for a long time because it offered optimum conditions for a wrecking match. Unfortunately, I was not the only one. There was an open tender and a bunch of architects' offices were competing to be the ones to build a gigantic shopping mall on the lot. But the guy who had the last word in the awarding of the contract was none other than our respected mayor. That tubalard was up to his neck in it because he'd blown his old fortune on horses and roulette. He didn't even have the cash to pay the taxi fare to my office. In this awkward situation, I, of course, had a sympathetic ear for his problems.
crash day was burning asphalt, screeching metal, and howling engines. The whole thing was driven by greed, by the insatiable greed of people who wanted more. And that's what we gave them. More stunts, more wrecks, the best cars, the best shows, the best parties, more, more, more. With the cash we made, we created our own paradise. Our vision of the Garden of Eden. A thing was born that was unstoppable. Crash Day. <laughs>